Missouri holds serve at home in the SEC, but Isaiah Mosley watch, well, it's on once again. So let's talk about that young man and how Dennis Gates has handled this situation coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hail you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball, and this episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more by visiting fanduel.com slash locked on to get today to get started. And As much as I would love to start off this podcast by talking about a nice home victory yesterday over the South Carolina Gamecocks, well, unfortunately, I got to start with Isaiah Mosley, I think, once again on this program, and unfortunately not for anything he did on the basketball court last night. No, his absence, once again, I think was the story of the game. Now, was he absent from the arena? No. In fact, Isaiah Mosley warmed up, dressed out. But according to Dennis Gates, before the game, Isaiah and him had a conversation and quote, we had a conversation before the game and we both, we both felt that it was great to take this one off. And according to Dave Matter of the Columbia Tribune, well, actually St. Louis Post-Dispatch, excuse me, formerly of the Tribune, Dave Matter, Later, Dennis Gates said that Mosley wanted to play tonight. So that kind of goes, that's a bit at odds with his previous statement that, boy, they just thought it was hunky-dory and that was just a great idea that he takes some, I don't know, a mental night off, load management, whatever the heck is going on here. There's absolutely no explanation there whatsoever. And in fact, those conflicting statements that Dennis Gates made, similar to what he made after the Kansas game regarding Isaiah Mosley. Well, once again, now these weird answers by Dennis Gates, these non-answers, if you will, that again are conflicting are just providing more room for people like me and other Missouri fans to speculate and of course have angst about this entire situation to the point where I'm firing off fairly innocuous, sarcastic tweets during the game, and people are running with it as if I have some sort of inside information. So allow me to clarify something that I said during the basketball game last night. I really felt like 95% of the people got the tone of this particular statement by me on Twitter last night. Here's what I said. I said, I was told we were finished with Mosley Watch 2023. Now, I think most people got the tone of that, which is me just sort of expressing frustration as a Missouri fan that, hey, I thought we were done with this whole period of, is Isaiah Mosley going to play? What the heck's going on with him? It seemed like we were into, oh, okay, he's a big part of the team now, and we're just going to plow forward. But of course, the previous game, well, he doesn't start. And now we have this whole situation where he doesn't play. So people are now, we're, we're coming at me online and saying, wait, are you saying that Mosley is done for the entire season? No, that's not what I'm saying at all. I was not saying that, I, I'm not saying I was told as in I have some sort of sources or inside information or knowledge here. I wish I did. I truly wish I did have some sort of inside information or knowledge to share with you here. But again, all I have is speculation and people on Power Mizzou message boards diving into deep Google searches and corners of the internet and trying to find out if Isaiah backed into a parked car or something like that. It's literally gotten to that point, ladies and gentlemen. So to me, as great as Dennis Gates has been this season, and you you can't say he's been anything but great, especially after you've seen what South Carolina looks like in year one with their new coach, what LSU looks like in year one 
with their new coach. Well, I'd say things are going pretty darn well at Missouri. It's just this whole situation is obviously disappointing as a fan. And if again, if this is some you know personal matter that is none of our business, well, great, fine and dandy. But Dennis Gates should just keep it at that and maybe take a page out of Bill Belichick's book and just say absolutely nothing. Be as boring as humanly possible, at least on this particular topic, because nothing he has said in the last few weeks on this has provided any insight whatsoever, number one. And number two, again, all it's done is just provided just a tunnel of space for people to speculate and create just a whole bunch of angst around what should be nothing but a positive season for Missouri basketball. So to me, if there's something that Dennis Gates maybe needs to learn a little bit, it may be some media relations, just a tiny bit. Now, in terms of the actual on-court impact for the Tigers, well, let's just say, I don't know, again, speculation here. I, I, I've got to assume that Mosley's going to play the next game, hopefully. At some point the rest of the season, again, we're, we're just left with more questions than answers at some point. So let's just take it to the logical extreme and say, okay, well, worst case scenario, Mosley doesn't play the rest of this season. You know what? That's not a complete disaster. It really isn't because Missouri is still a really good basketball team without Isaiah Mosley. Now, the problem is without him, their upside just isn't as high. Their ceiling is just simply not as high because while Mosley statistically hasn't been a particularly efficient offensive basketball player so far this season, boy, it sure seems like when he's played the most these last, these previous few games, Missouri has been at its best offensively and clearly everyone with two eyeballs and any understanding of basketball whatsoever can tell that the guy's incredibly skilled. He can score, he can pass, he, he can do it all basically on the offensive end of the court, and it just feels like, again, the more comfortable he gets, the better it's going to get. So that's why I was frustrated that, well, he played a relatively paltry 18 minutes against Ole Miss and didn't start. That just, did not, that just didn't make a lot of sense to me. But at the same time, I have to admit, not much about this Mosley situation has made a lot of sense this season because I got to almost think that whatever led to him not playing last night, you almost have to wonder if it was related to what was going on, you know, a month ago when he sat out multiple games in a row, seven or eight games in a row, whatever it was. I mean, you do have to think, okay, it seemed like he had totally settled in then at this point to now have him sit out again just on a rant, seemingly out of nowhere almost. It almost makes you wonder if these are separate issues. So again, just a mountain of speculation, so many more questions than answers. And well, I don't know. If I'm Dennis Gates, I just want to try to shut all of that down as much as possible. And to me, he hasn't done a very good job of that so far this season. Really one of the only things he hasn't done well, quite honestly. And speaking of Dennis Gates, his substitution patterns and lineup choices, well, I have to say I liked a lot more what I saw yesterday against South Carolina. The whole inexplicable Isaiah Mosley situation. Putting that aside, I really liked what Dennis Gates did on the basketball court yesterday against the Gamecocks. So let's talk more about that ball game and much more specifically about that ball game yesterday. But first, I got to tell you, yes, about our friends over at FanDuel because, well, not only are they the official sports book of the NFL, they're the official sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network as well. And this year, the only app you need at your Super Bowl party is indeed FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Download FanDuel now if you're a new user to get a Super Bowl 57 no sweat first bet where you'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. And you know what? If you've been listening to me lately, you probably won a little bit. Guess what? Hit the over 147 and a half pretty easily last night. Thank you very much. Yes, I am awesome at betting, but you know what? Maybe you're not so awesome. I don't know, but regardless, all you have to do 
is go to FanDuel because their app is safe, secure, and super easy to use. And best of all, you get paid instantly when you win. So join today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Thanks for making Locked On Mizzou your first listen every day. Make sure to check out our brand new podcast, Locked On College Basketball. Everything you need to know about college hoops in one place. The big time experts, insiders, coaches and players as well. That's Locked On College Basketball. Available on YouTube and of course where you get audio podcasts as well. And again, folks, I don't want anybody to misinterpret my tone from the first segment about Dennis Gates. I love the guy. My goodness. This has been as good of a first year as I could have possibly imagined so far. It really is. The the whole Isaiah Mosley saga, which unfortunately, yes, has continued into February of 2023. Well, all that aside, it's gone really, really well. And again, no better contrast than seeing what's going on at South Carolina right now. That team is in rough shape. 1 in 10 in the conference. Ken Palm has them in the 200s ranked overall. That's Kim Anderson territory, folks. That's one of his absolute worst teams at that. So, a long way to go for South Carolina and honestly, Thank you for not playing G.G. Jackson more, Lamont Paris. He only got 27 minutes last night, a guy who might well be heading toward the NBA next season, a kid who reclassified much like Jonte Porter did a few years ago. So he should be actually a, a senior in high school right now. And, well, if he'd have played a few more minutes, I think, well, maybe that Missouri game could have been a bit more a bit more scary at the end of the ball game. Let's put it that way. So again, thank you. And to my point, well, in the previous episode of Locked on Mizzou, I talked about how, in my opinion, there were 10 guys that Missouri should be playing from here on out. I thought Dennis Gates maybe mixed up the lineups, went a little bit too deep into the rotation against Ole Miss. So I thought, hey, to me, here's the 10 guys. And 10 guys is a lot, by the way. But you know what, Dennis Gates... I don't think he listened to me, but he did do what I wanted him to do because he actually played eight guys yesterday. No Isaiah Mosley, no Trey Gomillion, who sat out again with, I believe, some some knee issues for Trey. So to me, the tighter eight-man rotation there actually benefited Mizzou tremendously. You saw them play really good offensive basketball without any real notable lapses, long periods of time where... Missouri just couldn't seem to find a good look because maybe at times they had one too many guys on the court who were non-scorers. That was never really the case yesterday, and if anything, the closest guy to a non-scorer that Missouri played yesterday was Aiden Shaw, and of course you saw, well, he got some buckets, had a nice lob pass in there from Kobe Brown, and also knocked down a three-pointer too. So, in fact, Aiden Shaw can score the basketball. So I like seeing him get another nine minutes. Thought Mohamed Diara's 18 minutes were mostly very good as well. So a lot to like from the Tigers yesterday, again, despite the whole Isaiah Mosley thing. This team is good. It's just the ceiling not quite as high without Mosley. Well, another fabulous offensive night and just overall game from Kobe Brown once again. And just to give you an idea of how good Kobe Brown has been this year. Well, I think Zach Eady, I think at this point for Purdue, if you're paying attention to the rest of the country, he's got to be your by far and away favorite to be national player of the year at this point. Well, guess who's been even more efficient offensively than Zach Eady this year? Yes, it is in fact Kobe Brown who has a slightly higher offensive rating than even the great Zach Eady has this year. I mean, really, the season that Kobe Brown has put together this year has has really been stunning, quite honestly, because, well, Kobe is on pace to actually attempt more three-pointers than he has in any season so far. He's actually attempted more this year than he has than he did all of last season. Only his freshman season, he had four more attempts 
than he has so far this season. So he's going to easily surpass that in the last few games. And yet, Kobe Brown had never shot better than 25% from the three-point line. This year, 45%. That is a 20% increase, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, and at this point, it's February now. That doesn't really seem like that much of an accident anymore. So if he can keep this up, if he can keep up this level of shooting, and not only just shooting, but of course scoring as well, he's making over 60% of his two-pointers, nearly 80% of his free throws, a good rebounder, taking care of the basketball. What doesn't the guy do well, quite honestly? So there's actually a bold prediction that I made, what, about a week ago or something, saying that, hey, Kobe Brown and Isaiah Mosley, I think they're going to come back next year. That's my bold prediction. Well, I don't, I'm not sure I can make any strong predictions about anything related to Isaiah Mosley at this point, number one. And number two, Kobe Brown has played so well this season that maybe he does sneak himself into first round type NBA draft consideration. Not the craziest thing in the world if he keeps up this level of play. Can't say I saw it coming, especially not the three-point shot. I really never saw that one coming, but man, I'm really impressed, I'll tell you that. Unfortunately, it may make me look very silly in terms of a bold prediction I made, oh, just a few days ago. Already I'm feeling regretful. And coming up, you know what? Not an overly huge crowd at Mizzou Arena last night. Those Tuesday night games, especially the late ones, 8 o'clock, definitely tough for a bunch of people. So it does kind of make you question sometimes the last few years. Maybe Mizzou Arena was built a little bit too big. But you know what? I disagree. I actually think that the capacity is, in fact, the right number. So let's talk a little bit more about Mizzou Arena right after these quick words. So coming off the Norm Stewart era in the late 90s, of course, Missouri had tremendous success for the most part. Eight Big Eight championships under Stewart, I believe. 500 some odd plus victories. All that good stuff. Big Eight tournament titles. The whole deal. Well, obviously coming off a legendary coach, Missouri plucked Quinn Snyder and for the most part, Got off to a really good and promising start under Snyder as well. So at the time, hey, let's build this big, sparkling new basketball arena. But unfortunately, right about the time when ground broke on Mizzou Arena, that's basically when the Quinn Snyder era started to take, well, a nosedive. Let's be honest with it. So by the time the new arena opened, suddenly it could be a bit of a tomb at times. Well, fortunately, Mike Anderson turned it around, started filling up the place again much more often during conference season. But let's face it, there's been times where I've thought, you know, maybe 10,000, 12,000 would have been a better fit than an actual 15,000 seat arena. But you know what? When you actually take a step back and look at the rest of of Division I basketball. Oh, wait. Hey, we have something called statistics and objective numbers that we can look at. Well, you go over to KenPom.com, and it turns out Mizzou Arena, the 27th largest capacity arena in Division I basketball. Now, again, let's go back to the Norm Stewart era. Clearly, during that era, Missouri was one of the 27 best programs in the country. In fact, they were probably more like, I don't know, top 15 or even approaching top 10, depending on which era we're talking about here. So obviously, Missouri can aspire to be the 27th best program in Division I basketball. I don't even think that's debatable, especially when you consider that, well, just based on popularity alone, Missouri, you go to KenPom.com and you find out, oh, Missouri is one of the top 25 most popular teams. So, <laughs> excuse me. So while the program itself has certainly not been to that level during the Conzo era, the, the Kim Anderson eras, tail end of Frank Haith, all that good stuff for the last 10 years or so, has Missouri been that good? No, obviously they haven't. But the interest is there. The passion is there. The number of people are there. So in fact, going all the way back to, I believe the 
0405 season when Mizzou Arena opened. Yeah, that that 15,000 number. Actually, that is the right number because on a week on a weekend on just about every Saturday during SEC season, you got a team that looks like they're going to make the tournament. Hell, you're going to sell that thing out, especially when you give them entertaining basketball like Missouri has played this year. So you know what? The Page Sports Arena, well, that whole thing was regrettable, but the actual building itself, I think nearly 20 years on now, I think we'd do it all over again. I really do. And thanks again for listening to Locked on Mizzou and making it your first listen today. For your second listen, check out Isaac Shade and Andy Patton over at Locked on College Basketball. Everything you need to know on and off the court, plus the experts, coaches, and players throughout the college landscape. Again, that's Locked on College Basketball, available on YouTube and wherever you get finer podcasts. So until next time, I'm John Miller, and this has been... Locked on Mizzou.